Moving on now, the word is synonymous with what are now seen as some of the worst mass human rights abuses of the 20th century. But in some ways, there's also the lesser known. Gulag, the Soviet prison system, where anywhere between 14 and 24 million people were imprisoned and some 1.6 million killed. And yet no one was ever held accountable for the crimes committed there, begging the question of how the legacy has impact mo impacted modern-day Russia. Well, my guest today, Mikhail Panzan's book, Varlam, recounts his journey on the road of bones, on which a quarter of a million gulag prisoners perished. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks to you. So your book follows in the footsteps of writer Varlam Shamilov, who is perhaps a lot less known, at least outside of Russia, than Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Um, who was he? Well, it was... Uh, he's the, 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 the most important uh, writer uh, of this memory. We know in the Western countries, you know, the name of Solzhenitsyn, but actually in Russia, Valam Shalamov is much more famous than Solzhenitsyn and is more a writer, you know. He created a universe inside this hell that was the Gulag and he spent like 17 years in the most difficult, frozen place in the world. Uh, this place that uh, we traveled all across during one month, as you said, on this uh, road named the Road of Bones, because it's been built on the bones uh, of the prisoners that worked to build this road, and uh, is a magnificent uh, writer. And uh, he he was up to die many times there, and uh, he survived like by miracle because you know 17 years by minus 50 uh, degrees Celsius is something that uh, we can't imagine uh, experiencing. So, and uh, and we were you know trying to find. Uh, the last uh, legacies of uh, his presence there, and we, you know, visited a lot of places that he he was, uh, like, uh, for example, the hospital of Debin, because when he was to die, he was saved by a doctor, and then he could took a refugee and work in, in this in this hospital. He was also working on the road. He was also working because you know this region is uh, full of uh, very precious minerals like gold, tin, cobalt, and that's one of the ambition of the Gulag, you know, to exploit uh, this richness on the underground, but there were nowhere, nobody to go there, to work there, so they found the solution to send them the, the Zek, which is the name of the prisoners of the Gulag, and Valam Shalamov, because he was a political prisoner was sent there during 17 years. And he's not the only Varlam uh, that you talk about in your book. Yeah, the first, you know, this, uh, we crossed this uh, region during one month by minus 50. It was in, in February and the first day of our departure from y Yakutsk. The end was uh, the other city because there was only two cities in the, one of the most desertic places in the world, uh, which is the Magadan. So the first day, at the end of the day, we were already in the middle of nowhere. We found this uh, little animal that was dying from the cold. And ten, ten, ten minutes after uh, we found him, he would have been died. He would have died. And uh, it was a little cat. I will never know what happened to him, you know. What is his past? I don't know about it. And uh, so we rescued him, saved him, and uh, we continue the, the trip with him. And I named him Varlam because of Varlam Shalamov and uh, bringing back to Paris. Appropriately named. Um... Uh, despite the harsh conditions, uh, people live in this region. You spent time in your in your book uh, talking to the different people who live in this region. You spoke to historians, relatives of survivors, um, and and other locals. Is there a different way in in which these different communities of people remember the legacy of the Gulag, or do you think it's become more uniform over time? Well, in this region, everybody has a history with Gulag because, uh, of course, there were prisoners and the city that was built there, they were built by the prisoners, for the prisoners, because it was also a colonial uh, enterprise, you know. Uh, you, have, you have all these very precious things that interested the power and nobody to exploit there. So um, actually, we sent those people there, but, and they want, we wanted them to stay there, you know. So even if when they were free, they had to stay at the same spot to be able to work on that. So the only people that live there, actually they have a history with the Gulag. Uh, they are son or grandson or whatever uh, related to um, the prisoners. And some of them also 
well, came after, of course, and some of them were also um, part of the family of the, 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 the people who worked in this administration, that the vocation was uh, to uh, organize those camps. I mean, it was a, a huge uh, administration called Dastroy. So we have a very few inhabitants in this uh, area, but all of them, they have a, a history with the Gulag, actually. In recent years, Vladimir Putin has been kind of gradually rehabilitating Stalin's image, chipping away at organizations documenting the crimes of the Soviet era, most notably Memorial. Uh, do you think that this push has or will increase with the war in Ukraine to rehabilitate uh, the image of the Soviet Union, to kind of sweep under the rug increasingly uh, the horrors that were committed during that period? Well, actually, you know, uh, there's a lot of contradiction in uh uh, the national novel that built uh, uh, the USSR, the Russians, in the other hand, and also Putin. So you will have both the memory of the Gulag, because it was very strong at the end of the 90s, you know. People who had experienced that, there were a lot of people. So it was very difficult to, to block, to stop. And uh, it could have been also an element of the opposition against uh, Putin. So actually, he accepted kind of uh, this memory, as he accepted also the legacy of Stalin. So you have all these contradictions like living together in the memory of the Russians and, and in the strategic politics, memorial politics that Putin like, uh, you know, s uh, set up actually. Um, I think it's even harder to understand the kind of evolution and the, the dual nature uh, of these memorial politics, given that a substantial proportion of Russian adults today probably have a more or less direct connection to the gulags. No one was ever held accountable. Do you think that that's something that victims or relatives of victims would have liked to see? The problem now is the, you know, the oblivion, actually, because the new generation, people that have, like, 20 years old or something, they have no memory of it. It was very important. It impacted a lot uh, the Russian population, the, the, the Soviet population, not only the Russian, because they're Ukrainian as well, you know, uh, and a lot of people. But uh, the new generation, they're really very ignorant about what was the Gulag, what was Stalin, actually. So, uh, so it's very difficult to, to, to say what's going to happen to those memories, you know, in the future. Do you think, perhaps as a final question for you, Mikhail uh, uh, Prazan, um, that there's a threat for Vladimir Putin in paying too much attention to the crimes of, of the Stalin era could uh, encourage Russians today to think deep, more deeply about Vladimir Putin's regime? Well, it's very difficult to, to know and to imagine what the Russians think about it now, you know. Uh, the people I knew, the people I love, uh, they flee, uh, they flew the... the you know, after the, the, the attack of Ukraine, they are not in Russia anymore. Uh, they had to, to leave. So uh, what think exactly about it? What think exactly about uh, the gulag and the aggression uh, of Ukraine is very difficult to know. And, um, well, I don't know. I don't feel like a strong opposition, but it's difficult to understand why, you know. Is it because of the fear? Is it because of the approval of this war? Is it because of the propaganda that actually startled maybe like 15 years ago, even if we didn't know about it? Uh, so what's the end of the story? I don't know. Well, I'm sure <laughs> the, the coming months will, will give us a better idea. Mikhail Prezant, author of Varlam, thank you so much for joining us. On Thanks to you.